from Eve. And many times when people choose with their power of choice to chill, then we know that no matter what choice we make, there are going to be consequences. So therefore, when we choose to chill at the expense of neglecting to steal, then obviously the outcome may not be to our best interest. So, in essence, we have everything we need as far as becoming liberated and powerful people on this earth. You know, liberation also means that we have to become economically empowered. For example, many of our social, spiritual, emotional problems can be linked directly to the lack of economic empowerment. When we do not control businesses, and we are not in the avenue of uh, distributors and producers of the goods and services that we do use, then many times we find ourselves unemployed or underemployed. And in that dilemma of economic deficiency, we find ourselves at the mercy of whoever is in charge of the economy. And obviously, with that being said, many problems can occur because we do not have the power financially to control our destiny. And so therefore, it is imperative that we become economically empowered. Today, many people throughout not only America but throughout the world are struggling because of the lack of economic empowerment. Many of our social and emotional illnesses can again be directly linked to the fact that we are not in a position to control businesses. For example, a person who's unemployed is not happy. They're not content with the serious spiritual level that they may be encountering in their life. If you are able to follow what I'm saying, that is, many times people are stressed out, frustrated, depressed, and having extreme discomfort because by nature, it is required that we work. Many times when we successfully complete a task, then we know because of that completion, we feel good by the accomplishments that we have been able to achieve. So with that being said, again, we have to follow the directive powerful directors that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad gave us when it comes to economic empowerment. We should also understand that education is more and goes far beyond academics. So we need to raise our level of intelligence to see the holistic scope of what education actually entails. Because we know the Honorable Elijah Muhammad had a basic third grade academic education, but that was not his strength. His strength was economic empowerment. So that told us right there, from that example there, that education is more and goes far beyond academics. And because of his insight from the economic status, we were able to see substantial gains when it came to the community. Pride, dignity, self-assurance, motivation, pride, and actually production in the area simply because of being in charge of our economics. So therefore, we have to study and learn from great leaders, not only in today's time, but great leaders in the past. And we have to recognize the contributions that Imam Wardin Muhammad gave to the world, and that is he constantly allowed us to look at the example of Prophet Muhammad. 
a piece of message we have on here and the idea or suggestion that we would like to leave here with is to recognize that Imam Gordon Muhammad continuously and steadfastly addressed moral excellence. Moral excellence. That's right. And, and because of that, we now know that education also goes into moral intelligence. Moral intelligence. And many people are failing because they refuse to implement sound moral characteristics in their life. If you can understand, no matter what your skills are, academically or vocationally or in various forms of business, if you are morally corrupt, then that moral corruption will allow will not allow you to have a peace of mind. So there's great wisdom in that to recognize that the strongest level of education of all the levels of education is morality. Moral intelligence is the highest level of education. And that's why we have to use the Quran as a criteria to use as a measuring stick in order to judge whether or not something is acceptable or not. And when we can rise to that level of intelligence, then we have the best measuring apparatus or measuring stick in order to proceed in life. And so we have to understand Again, that in order for New World Pentecostals yeah, to awesome really awesome and develop, then we need to be socially intelligent. Social intelligence means that we have to learn how to get along with each other. That's very important. Instead of despising and backbiting and bickering and hating, you know, when they say people, you let them hate them. You know, that's social ignorance. And because of those deficiencies when it comes to social intelligence, we can't unify, unification, or come together for a commonality in order to defeat common enemies. So therefore, social intelligence is also an important mechanism or component as far as the overall factor that brings about world patriotism. So there are many levels of new world. New world means new mind. The one thing Muhammad talked about coming out of that old mind. That old mind that was designed for self-destruction. We have to get rid of bad habits and come into a new mind. And one of the worst habits that we had from slavery was the habit of cheating. Because cheating for slavery really was a passport to keep us alive. And when we stood up and tried to be responsible human beings, taking that moral stance could put you in the serious danger of being killed. So, again, we picked up a very bad habit of shielding at the expense of neglecting to steal. But at the same time, we need to understand why it was imperative that our ancestors chose to chill because that was a life serving uh, activity. But in today's time, the world patriotism, we have no excuse to chill at the expense of the neglect of the We have to elevate ourselves to really become intelligent because we know that if we are academically incompetent, academically uh, illiterate, that puts us at a disadvantage. That's no secret. And that's no great mystery to understand that if we are academically ignorant or academically challenged, then we are at a disadvantage. So likewise, when we are spiritually incompetent or spiritually uh, ignorant, then that illiteracy also puts us at a disadvantage. So here we have to rise up and analytically Think about the various forms of intelligence. You know, the Honorable Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King stated in his world-renowned book, From Strength to Love, that two of the 